with section D, looking beyond the single story. In this witty remark, Shuri directly uses the term colonizer sarcastically and ironically as Agent Ross wakes up from his near-death experience after she has quote healed another white boy. <laughs> this is both a physical and metaphorical awakening. He wakes up to realize just how ignorant he really has been all this time. Blinded by the stereotype of a retrogressive Africa, it is truly a moment of revelation for him to see Wakanda in all its glory, all its colorful, diverse vibranium technology, culture and wealth. He realizes like the rest of the world, he has been or at least had been blinded by that single story. And in another interesting coincidence, T'Challa also physically and metaphorically wakes up to realize after knowing a little more about his cousin's tragic past, Eric Kimonga isn't really a villain. He is trying to achieve world equality, but the pain and loss he suffered from even early childhood has greatly corrupted his methods of doing so. The resentful Kimonga, his father Njobu, and even Nakia have had a more worldly and versatile knowledge of the current affairs than most Wakandans because they have lived in it and encountered many things outside the Wakandan borders. That is why they realized way before T'Challa did that Wakanda was being rigid, short-sighted and even selfish by squeezing the entire world under one bracket of that single story early on. When T'Challa eventually sees the alternate story, he begins to understand the world is not black and white and the line between good and evil is not as clear as he and his ancestors once thought it was. This is how King T'Challa comes to the decision of changing the long-standing Wakandan law and tradition of secrecy, privacy, closure and begins to establish international outreaches that are to help those other impoverished black people around the world. Conclusion hmm. Of course, Africa is a continent full of catastrophes, the immense ones such as the horrific rapes in Congo and depressing ones such as the fact that 5,000 people apply for one job vacancy in Nigeria. But there are other stories that are not about catastrophe, and it is very important, it is just as important to talk about them. I've always felt that it is impossible to engage properly with a place or a person without engaging with all of the stories of that place and that person. The consequence of the single story is this, it robs people of dignity. It makes our recognition of our equal humanity difficult. It emphasizes how we are different rather than how we are similar. Stories matter. Many stories matter. Stories have been used to dispossess and to malign, but stories can also be used to empower and to humanize. Stories can break the dignity of a people, but stories can also repair that broken dignity. I would like to end with this thought, that when we reject the single story, when we realize that there is never a single story about any place, we regain a kind of paradise. As philosopher Alvin Hofler once said in one of his awesome quotes, in this modern age, those who are illiterate are not those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Chimamanda's biggest lesson of his speech is that in this modern world, this big, diverse, fast-paced, and ever-changing society, you cannot simply stay stationary when it comes to education, knowledge, or learning. Read comprehensively and widely even about a single subject. It is a good cliche when they say don't judge a book by its cover. It is essential to get a single story from multiple perspectives as possible before you can pass judgment. If you crouch on that incomplete single story, not only are you risking promoting negative stereotypes that emphasize our differences and divide us as humans even more, you also miss out on that much deeper, diverse thought of worldly philosophy that can actually help you and bring us closer as one world. As for Black Panther the film, this film, wait, I mean my second totem, the totem fired home on so many cylinders that this one video just doesn't do justice to it. 
I don't usually watch movies at the theater, but when I watched my Totem, I wasn't disappointed. I walked out of that theater with a new feeling of purpose and identity. Unlike most people, I always knew Black Panther from an early age because I'm a nerd and I read comic dogs. <laughs> have been just another Marvel superhero cash grab, but what director Ryan Coogler did with the Totem was outstanding, simply outstanding. The extensive research, thought and attention to detail seemed in every second and every frame of the film. As I said, this movie deserved its hype. There are those who say it was overrated, but what do they know? They don't understand what it means to be Africans who are used to being subject of police brutality and slave whippings on the silver screen. Never has a movie produced African culture with so much respect and so much aesthetic complexity. Or maybe I'm just being a sucker for color. I mean, this scene, right? Oh, this scene. Words cannot describe what this film means to me. This movie is one of the major influences to this brand itself and I continue to draw a lot of inspiration from it. Even now, some may hate and not understand what a milestone this film was, but I hope this video gave you a slight idea. So as for me, as for Mimsy Africa as a whole, for the yesterday, for the now, for the tomorrow, and for the forever, it will always be Wakanda forever. Thanks for watching, guys. Mimsy Africa. <laughs>